Mike Gill, State of Corruption. I don't know how many of you saw the presidential debate yesterday. But before I get into that, can we establish this one thing? I hate the corrupt politicians in this state, whether they're Republicans or Democrats. You've seen Bill Shaheen's and Gene Shaheen's face on my sign, Kelly Ayotte's face on my sign, and Ted Gatz's. And if it's not on the sign, I'm going to put it on. All right? So I hate them equally. So let's step through this. Kelly Ayotte, right? Did you know, speaking of hate, the Republican senator, that she was face of security over fraud ca case FRM? Right. This is what she covered up, and you'll be happy to know it was investigated. It says it right here in this article. You know who investigated it? Dickhead. Right. Richard Head, the assistant attorney general who worked for her previously. The article only says that they have evidence from 2003 that, that FRM and the criminality of what's going on was given to the AG's office. You know who? Richard Head. You question that? I got the asshole's notes. Right. And it refers to attorney Ashley who was hired in 2003 and said, hey, listen, Peter Hildreth has many conflicts with the people of FRM. He's good friends. In fact, John Gallagher, right here, who's representing FRM, FRM is his best friend. You need more proof than Hildreth put his two brothers on FRM? See, they all knew. This was Shaheen's Ponzi scheme. You know who appointed the banking commissioner? That witch right there, Gene Shaheen. And the real culprit, Bill Shaheen. He's the one who runs them off. Now, again, Republican, Democrat, they work together. You just think they hate each other. These assholes are business partners. Let's go on. Republicans like, hey, how about Teddy and Eddie Munster? Munster, right. He's only part of the corruption in the state as the mayor of Manchester, which is the worst drug-addicted city in the country. Wait a minute. We'll get to it. Now, your other senator candidate is Hassan, right? Hassan owes her career to, guess what, Jean Shaheen. She said it herself. In fact, the article is, all hands on deck. My own style in politics, I owe it to Gene Shaheen. And Bill Shaheen, can you see a clone? Speaking of clones, Colin Van Osteren. Right. That's him getting a little, well, her getting a little close with him. Who the fuck is Colin Van Osteren? Well, let's take a look. He worked as the yogurt guy. And... See? That's what he did. What did he do before that? People of New Hampshire. Do you want to know who the hell you're voting for? Well, let's take a look. Did you know he was the senior advisor for Gene Shaheen? Can you say clone? Yes, he looks like a clone. And then he was the owner of a nonprofit. Remember, biggest lie, nonprofit. Right? So he was making yogurt. That's what he's been doing. From yogurt to the uh, executive council to running the whole fucking shooting match for making yogurts. Hey, you know when this asshole was making yogurt? You know what I was doing? Yeah, this shit right here. Telling you how corrupt it is. This guy's born and bred for this shit. This is a Shaheen clone to a Hassan clone to a clone. Right? Well, he's married and she was the... Let's get it. She was the budget director for Governor Lynch. We're talking about people who were born and bred to dirty politics. This is who they are. And they've done a hell of a good job, you know, with, with their considering how well they did with the financing for colleges and so forth, nonprofit. Except for, we're the most expensive state university system in the country. Nice fucking job. And then we've got Sununu, right? Remember? 
Daddy's Boy, we're going to show a little clip of Waterville Valley. Where's the financing? How do you get it? You don't think they use their political influence and Daddy's influence to get the financing. But I wonder how's it doing? I know you watch the commercials as I watch the commercials. Doesn't sound so good. Chris Sununu's family gave him a famous name and the top job at the family resort. But then things went, well, downhill. Listen, real quick regarding employment. If you go from three people working at 40 hours a week and they're all paying insurance, or you turn around and knock them all 30 hours a week, hire the fourth one at the same price and nobody gets insurance. So all of a sudden your employment numbers Look better, your unemployment numbers. That's a 25% increase. Except for everybody's making less than uninsured. How's that, geniuses? Anybody do the math? All right. So, now, Sununu, I mean, if you want a tradition of crooked politics, here you go. Or a clone, those are your choices. Why do you think Bill Gardner, oh, Bill, I had somebody go in and you talked to them. Right, who's running as a rep. And you know what you slipped and said? You didn't know this person was a friend of mine. You said, brag about how you got Gil off the ballot. Well, let's see if Gil can't put your bony ass in jail. All right? Now, before we move on to Van Osteren and Sununu, I showed you a video of me going to the executive council hearing approving of the banking commissioner Little. I talk about FRM, I talk about drug laundering. You know these pencil heads never ask me one question. Those are your two other candidates for governor. You want the guy asking fucking questions and giving answers, or the two retards are not saying a fucking word. In fact, Mr. Saloon, I talked to Mr. Abar, and Mr. Abar was putting together a complaint along with mine to the Department of Justice. You talked him out of it. In fact, you had him put it to the AG's office. Now think about this. Well, I have text messages from Mr. I have the text messages with me. In fact, his exact words was, Sununu smells blood in the water. And when we're done, you can read them to everybody if you'd like. Because let's think, from this point forwards, right, let's go back. You see all the people I brought up? Have you heard one of them, just one of them, say that there's corruption in this state? Not one. So wait a minute now. You know there is. I've only been showing to you for years. Now think about it. Either they're corrupt themselves, or they're stupid. I mean, real fucking stupid. Or they're both, which I tend to think they are. They're not making their money from opening businesses and creating jobs and revenue. They have sleaze bags that are sucking the life out of the state. Now, let's go to Trump's clip from yesterday, the presidential debate. The world was watching. And when they talked about borders and drugs pouring into this country, Donald Trump mentioned one state. New Hampshire. Right. New Hampshire? And then he was saying a border state. Well, there's a map of Laredo, Texas to Manchester, New Hampshire. 21 hundred miles. Now I agree with Mr. Trump, but it's the corruption in the state. It is the sanctuary of these fucking criminals that allows this to come in. Hey, listen, Agonos, I know about all your shipping companies. You know, the ones that are off the books. The ones that are near the airport. Right. See? This is Grand Central. They fly it in, they drive it in, they truck it in, and they motorcycle it in. So, in listening to this, he also speaks. Again, even CNN brings it up. So how is it that New Hampshire is the center of the heroin capital of this fucking country? So it's time for us to stop paying attention. Well, the Border Patrol agent, 16,500 plus ICE last week, endorsed me. First time they've ever endorsed a candidate. It means their job is tougher. But they know what's going on. They know it better than anybody. They want 
strong borders. They feel we have to have strong borders. I was up in New Hampshire the other day. The biggest complaint they have, it's with all of the problems going on in the world, many of the problems caused by Hillary Clinton and by Barack Obama, all of the problems, their single biggest problem is heroin that pours across our southern borders, just pouring and destroying their youth. It's poisoning the blood of their youth and plenty of other people. We have to have strong borders. We have to keep the drugs out of our country. We are, right now, we're getting the drugs, they're getting the cash. But we have some bad hombres here, and we're going to get them out. What was your reaction? No, this is, this is not politicizing someone's death ban. This is really important here. If we want to talk about picking and choosing which deaths to care about, you know, President Obama has cared about certain men who have died at the hands of police officers. Your, your idea about politicizing deaths, I assume it applies to your own president. It's not politicizing deaths to care about a certain group of people. And Donald Trump cares about the fact that kids in New Hampshire have died Katie, of heroin that has been brought in here by Katie, illegal immigrants. There are people who have lost their lives. One at a time, one at a time. I told you who these drug dealers are. I told you how they're getting away with it, right? I mean, I created jobs. I had the largest business brokerage firm. I had the largest mortgage volume company in the country. In fact, Fannie Mae came out to ask me how did I do it. And then when I told them what I was doing, they did training videos to train everybody that they were bringing in licensing in the country. Right. That's some of their training advertisements. Again, this guy's has daddy helping him. This guy's making yogurt and nonprofits and just sucking the life out of the state. And I just built the two largest businesses in the history of the country in those areas. So I want you to consider this. When it comes to the election, right in my guilt. Make a statement, let's all of us make a statement that we're not going to take this anymore. You can be corrupt and we're going to get past it. We're going to go around it. We're going to go through it. Right? We're not going to give up. And one last thing. When this is done and the election's over, win, lose, or draw, you know where I'm going to be? Right here, promoting state of corruption building a watchdog group. We're going to be up their asses at all fucking times. Mike Gill, State of Corruption.